Hey, it's Andrew Huang. We've got a special episode of Four Producers, One Sample. My guests today are Rachel K. Collier, Ocean, and Tommy Trash. And we're doing something today I've been dreaming of since I started Four Producers, which is we have permission to sample an actual 1970s soul record, thanks to today's sponsor, Tracklib, uh, with the history of the sampling art form and how many iconic songs have been made with 70s soul samples. I'm just super stoked that we could make that a part of this series. Tracklib is the world's only online record store for sampling. They have over 100,000 records that you can sample and the catalog is always growing. And anything that you sample from from them, you can get cleared right on the site. So you can log in at tracklib.com and listen through real released 1970s soul records or tons of other kinds of music from other eras. You can browse their inspiration page or use all kinds of search features on their whole catalog. You can download and sample them into your productions. And then if you wanna release your song commercially, just go back to the site and you can get a license for your sample fast and affordably. And then this feature is amazing. You can make a loop right on the site. Every track is tempo mapped, so you can choose a number of bars to loop and then add different styles of beats. Just to give you a sense of how you might use the sample. There's even side chain ducking here. And now I can just click around this track and find cool loops. And on top of that, many songs on the site also have the original multi-track. So if you wanted to, you could just pull, say, the lead vocal. So it's an amazing service if you're into sampling and they have a special intro offer right now at tracklib.com slash Andrew Huang if you want to get 30 days free and 15 download credits. And here's the sample we're using in this episode. Baby. It's a classic Philly soul song from 1974 called You Don't Know What You're Doing by Sound Experience. You take the ring from your finger and you don't know what you do. This is from the Philly Groove Reservoir Media Catalog you on Tracklib. You can go use it yourself if you want. Play a bit of the chorus too. Now let's jump in and see what everybody in this episode did with this sample. You don't know what you're doing to yourself. Hey, I'm Rachel K. Collier. Thank you so much, Andrew, for having me back. Let me show you how I made my track. So the first thing I did was separate out my vocal and instrumental, and I used this lovely little site, Acapella Extractor, then in Ableton Live session view, I had a lot of fun chopping out what I thought were the coolest phrases from the track. Then I ran the vocal through the Max for Live buffer shuffler and got some other funky things like this. It was time to reharmonize. grabbed the microcosm and started running the whole instrumental through the glitch section on this pedal. Which with a whole lot of processing later, I ended up using for the first verse in the track. Then using a little bit of Ovox, I made a pretty cool pad from the vocal from the track. and decided that the slow moving bass line wasn't quite right for the funkiness of the vocal chops. I started to add a little bit of drums, played around for ages in session view then, experimenting with structure. First one, breakdown, B section. I spent absolutely ages on retiming the sample first verse over here with the warp markers in Ableton just to try to get it to sit really well and then I processed it a lot, tuned it, EQ'd it, soothed to de-harsh the overall texture. I then used as many vocal textures and chops as possible to actually make up some of the synth sounds. <laughs> The synths I did add were very sparkly, pretty little things. So there we have it. There's my breakdown. Thanks again, Andrew and Tracklib for having me. Mwah.
wow, she's really, really doing stuff to the sample. Take a ring from your finger. I'm liking the bounce so far. Really chill, but it's Rachel, so I know it's gonna. Woo! Yeah, there it is. Jeez, that drop was insane. And I love the vocal chops in between it as well. Yeah. So much energy, man. This is huge. Sorry. Love those background vocals coming in. <laughs> I love it. Whoa, these chops. You don't know what you're doing to yourself. Take your bags and walk out. You don't know where you're going. Really cool reharmonization with this bass line here. Wow. Sick. You don't know what you're doing to yourself. Yeah, I love this one. You know, she managed to isolate the vocals really well. She's like using them now to create her own background vocal part. With those vocal chops, it sounds like a, like a proper song vocal. Mm. <laughs> wow, there's just so many ways that she changed this sample up. <laughs> it's like... The ecstasy moment. Mm. Sick. But just like different song structures, I feel like we keep going from one thing to a new thing to a new thing. Yeah. The background percussion. That's a groove. Again, she just keeps on like building and varying it. It's a really interesting song structure. Yeah, man. Yeah, sick. I really, really enjoyed that. Yeah, that one is insane. That sounded fantastic. You don't know what you're doing to yourself. So the first thing I did, I had these drums right here. It was a loop, but I chopped up the individual sections. Really simple drums. But then what I did was bounce that out. I took that audio file and I put it into Serato sample so I could play around on the keyboard and find new chops from that. And then with the sample, I did the same thing. I dragged it into Serato. I pitched it up five semitones, so it's got like that high pitch kind of sound. And I found a pattern from that. So we've got two sections of that, just a bit of RC20 on it to give it a vintage feeling. So together with the drums, this is what we got. Now just to add in a bit of variation, I added in some saxophone from output. So it goes like this. Really jazzy. Also throughout the whole track, I've got this vinyl sound playing, just some crackling. Again, just add into that old feeling and that's my beat finished. <laughs> Sick. Nice. Yeah, it just kicks right in. All right. Oh, oh damn. Super cool chops. So sick. I like the little snare drop outs. I like the pitch of 
to like bring all the focus to the horn there. <laughs> I love it. Now you got that one more. This is so cool. Now you got that one more. Ocean Now you got that one more Killing it. Awesome vibes. So laid back. Very nice, Ocean. I love that. That's so tasty, man. Baby. G'day, g'day, I'm Tommy Trash. Gonna make some music for you guys. When I first got the sample through, check the tempo out, it was about 65 BPM, I think. I was like, sweet, did some math, two times 65, it's 130, which makes for a nice pumped up house remix. Put a kick drum in. And I just started doing two beat, four beat loops. <laughs> And then like side chain, I use LFO tool. Took out some of the low end. Part of the reason why I'm side chaining so heavily too is just to get rid of some of those drum transients from the original, just to just get them out. Went over to the keyboard and just played in the bass line. Got old sausage fattener. Shout out to Data Life Boys. So this is the main drop. Just basic house stuff. Kick. Big offbeat 909. A little shaker. Then we got clap. I thought maybe if I pop it into Isotope RX9, because it'll spit out vocals, other music, bass line, and percussion stuff. So the vocal ended up coming up pretty good man so you got the baby baby and then you got the oh yeah 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 and then i really need you so that's the vocals for that section what i ended up doing was getting part of the master popping it in simpler just dividing it up into little slices and i kind of got this basically one stab you can see it's that stab just like a bit of pitch bend on it. Bit of, bit of echo on there. And then I went into the musical stem and there is this really cool line. And I'm just filtering it up slowly. Got meta flange on, but then it's just... I mean, it's subtle in there, but it just gives it something, something. And then with the... <laughs> Baby. I've got these little choppers too. If we hear that like you can see there i've just played it in it's totally off the grid just helps make the beat a bit looser and less perfect and then i got these little wow and then we got also it's just little extra bits of flavor subtle but it's house music man you don't want to overcook it and then i've got this little like hope you enjoyed i hope i don't know if that was useful information but I had fun doing this. Peace out. All right, we got something a little more up-tempo. Ooh, I feel like this one's going to have a crazy drop. You can hear that sample there as well. Woo! Hey. Yeah. <laughs> this one's got, like, such a great vibe to it. Just makes you want to move. It's summertime and I'm on a boat. That is very funky. This one just going off in a club or something. It's just, yeah, it's too vibey. Baby. Baby. I really need you. Don't leave me. Baby echoing in the background is real nice. Well, there'll never be another you. Super Baby. cool build. You know it's going to be another epic drop here. I really need you. There'll never be another you. Hey. Yeah, I love this one. 
this groove. Seriously, this is a boat party. Uplifting summer dreamy vibe. It just makes you want to move. It's definitely got that club vibe. Oh man, that was way too short. That's just something you got to dance to for like eight minutes. You don't know what you're doing to yourself. So I created three different song sections out of the sample um, two that are more mellow and one that's more kind of like a heavy boom bap thing. Let me start by showing you just what I did with the sample. The track starts out with this one. Just quarter note chops being filtered in. And then there's this one part in the song where uh, they sing, you don't know what you're doing to yourself. And the way I kind of cut it, it sounded more like you do it to yourself. I don't know, fun little Radiohead reference. You're too into yourself. So I time stretched that one part where uh, he's singing self, threw it to a reverb that was going from completely dry to completely wet, just to space it out as a kind of a transitional thing. Then we've got a hint of the heavier section, just this repeated blast of horns. It's really just kind of a tease because then it immediately goes into this second mellow section. Here I cut up the verse part of the sample and they use a lot of really interesting chords in this song. I came up with a different progression by cutting them up but also pitch shifting them a bit. It's kind of a cool way to work because you end up coming up with a progression that you never would have on your own. There's a turnaround at the end here where I reverse the sample. And then that gets us into the main harder section. It's just a few different cuts of that horn part. So that's what I did with the sample and it's playing throughout the whole track, but um, you know, fairly basic usage, just chops, bit of pitch shifting, reversing, minimal processing, like some EQ, compression, uh, saturation, filter, reverb, more compression. I feel like some people will be like, that's a lot of processing. <laughs> basic stuff though, you know? Lighter snare for the mellow sections, heavier snare for the heavier sections. To reinforce my new chord progression and also because I wanted to have a more solid bass part throughout, because just based on how I chopped everything up, the bass wasn't feeling super consistent, I played my own bass line in and I also filtered out the lows from the original sample. I did play the hi-hats and an extra rim shot live. This is something that I believe Prince did a lot where you'd have programmed drums, but then just play the hi-hats live. And um, that creates a much liver feel, even though all of these drums are like sampled or from a drum machine. I made a little loop out of my playing and uh, it's going to a UAD plate reverb with uh, an extra little Extra little bump to that reverb send every time the rim shot hits. Got three different tracks of tom fills here that I was trying out. And then I got one track of a whole bunch of different auxiliary percussion going, which on its own, it's so random. But in context with all the other drums, it just gives you so much more groove. Just to add a little bit more vibe, I played some uh, Rhodesy kind of keys. And then there's just a few little bits of ear candy. You know how I like the ear candy. A little swell. Stack some risers. How about a faller? And then I made some little arpy things, you know. Every episode of Four Producers, there's an arp somewhere. That is how I made my track. Hope you enjoy. Oh! That's so tasty. Smooth. Oh, very nice. You're too into your face. Oh, that's so good. Let's see where this goes. Yeah! 
so smooth. That chord change. Oh, I love it. That is a very nice twist on that original rhythm of the sample. Oh, wow. It's just so tasteful. That was some ear candy right there. That was sounding crazy. Yes, Andrew. Woohoo. Sia came to listen to that as well. So thank you again, TrackLib, for sponsoring. You can get 30 days free at tracklib.com slash Andrew Huang. And if you haven't checked out their YouTube channel, I also highly recommend that. They've got these amazing sample breakdown videos where they show you how some of the most famous sampled songs were constructed. It's really cool. I'll link to that in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. You take the ring from your finger You don't know what you're doing You don't know what you're doing